let's have a look at create system manually. It's basically you're creating a container for endpoints. So in this case, in the WooCommerce, which we've created previously, you can see that it's a container where it's got some settings like the system URL and some authentication. And underneath, you can see the different data endpoints, which in this case are customer order and product. When you're creating a system manually, you get only the container. And then you as a user need to add endpoints into that system. So let's go ahead and create a system manually. Um, let's call it my custom system. This is what you get. It's a simple container and now we need to actually add stuff into it. So <clears throat> this is really useful for um, any custom API or FTP endpoint. Basically any system which you cannot find in the systems library in the wizard, you can still connect this system using dsync as long as there is an available API. How to add an endpoint to a custom system? Again, you just select it by clicking on its name and from the right, right sidebar um, you choose add an endpoint. Let's call it products. You select the type, so it's either source or destination, it can be both. It's not an endpoint which would both send and receive data, so you need to choose what kind of endpoint this is. So for example, with WooCommerce, if we want to extract, export all products from WooCommerce, it's a, uh, it would be a source endpoint because we're getting data out of there and pushing it somewhere else. So if you want to extract all products, select source here, and from the connector type, I would select an API. This basically adds a blank endpoint into that system. And again, if you click on that endpoint, you can see the associated settings here for the API endpoint. So this is where you would specify the URL. You would choose the HTTP method uh, because it's source. It's the only available method in here is get. You can set custom headers and you can also set basic authentication in here. Now, if the basic authentication is not enough, you can go into the system settings and you can choose your authorization method. If, for example, there is an OAuth or OAuth2, we do have generic plugins for that. So you would go generic OAuth1, for example, you would fill all the settings in here with the consumer key secret, the token URIs and so on. Um, you can add custom headers and you would authorize the connection that way. So that's uh, manual. Let's, let's create an FTP endpoint as well so that I can show you. That would be FTP. And let's make a destination. So in this case, we would be getting data from somewhere and file on an FTP um, on that WooCommerce server. And we choose FTP in here. And here we go. So this is our destination FTP endpoint. Again, uh, if I select it by clicking on it, you can see there's the host the username for the FTP, password, the protocol used. So these things supports all three. It's FTP, FTPS, and SFTP. Um, you can also specify the port, the path where the file will be uploaded, and the file name. Uh, the file name can have a dynamic date as well to it. Once you're done with setting this up, you would just hit Save Settings. So this is pretty much how you add systems and API and FTP endpoints inside those systems.